to begin by thanking the Riverside Indonesian. A big thank you to you for lifting us up with your music. It was a blessing. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate that. Yes. And I want to give another big thank you to the church. Last Sabbath was our 51st wedding anniversary. And we got so many calls. We got um, texts. I want to thank you. It was a special day. But you know what? <clears throat> Last week as well, um, one of our longstanding members, Tom Sapara and Vi, <clears throat> they would have had 77 years of marriage. Incredible. And um, I want to just uh, share a little story that happened to me uh, with the Saparas. <clears throat> he invited me to go to his home. He says, I have something for you. I have some tithes. And so I went over thinking he was going to give me some tithe, you know, little envelopes of tithe. I went over there, and um, he asked his uh, caretaker to bring the box out. So she went in the back. She brought out a box full of ties, uh, th these kind of ties. I'm wearing one right now. <laughs> these beautiful ties. He says, take as many as you want, and hankies, you know. She says, so it, I was like a kid in a uh, candy store. <laughs> I mean, I was, <clears throat> I get most beautiful ties. I mean, Italian ties, I mean, just, you know, I get mine at uh, Ross Dress for Less, but these were, <laughs> these were, th these are quality ties. People ask me about my ties, you know, now you know where they come from. <laughs> so, yes, um, <clears throat> just, they are just so generous, just a wonderful, wonderful uh, couple. They've done so much for the church. Really grateful for that. Let's have a little prayer here before I get started. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, as we open your word, we pray that you would continue to bless us. We've been blessed with the music, the children's story, every element of this worship service. We pray that you would bless us today. We ask in Christ's name, amen. All right, so this morning, <clears throat> we're going to conclude with part two Part two of our short series on when temptation strikes, when temptation strikes. But we will begin with a short review of what we spoke about last Sabbath. We dealt with the nature of temptation, the sources of temptation, <clears throat> the place where temptation takes place, and also we saw some of the safeguards, safeguards that help us with temptation. <clears throat> so we dealt with the nature of temptation. And first we established that temptation is normal. It's something normal. Human beings all get tempted. We live in a fallen world, so that's a given. We all get tempted. And it doesn't matter how long <clears throat> you've been in the church, if you've been serving the Lord for 50 years or 50 minutes, you will be tempted. We can avoid temptation. <clears throat> and we said, when temptation strikes, remember that temptation is not sin. What did I just say? Temptation is not sin. In fact, when temptation strikes, Remember the sources, right? The sources of temptation. They come from within, our carnal nature, and they come from without, from the demons, from the devil who tempts us. <clears throat> and so the battle is in our mind. The battle takes place when you're tempted in our mind. You remember, we're tempted, we consider we consent, we plan, and we act. Now, we just said that temptation is not sin. It's a sin to consider. That's when you kind of think, am I going to do it or not? We can't spend much time there. 
It becomes sin when we consent. We're going to do it. Even if we don't do it, what happens generally is that we don't get the opportunity. So um, then we went into the safeguards. We went into the safeguards how to get the victory, the victory over temptation, and this through Jesus Christ. So today we'll continue. <clears throat> we'll continue with four, four biblical safeguards we can use when temptation strikes. Number one, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. As Christians, we cannot, I repeat, we cannot, we cannot win this battle on our own. We daily need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Daily, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I'm referring to inviting the Holy Spirit into our lives every day. Not once a week or two times a week, but every day. We never know what we're going to encounter, what temptations, what battles we're going to encounter. So, important to invite the Holy Spirit every day into your lives. And <clears throat> why is that? Because the Holy Spirit empowers us to have victory over sin. It's the Holy Spirit that empowers us to have victory over the sources of temptation, both within and without. Now, how do we incorporate? How do we incorporate the Holy Spirit into our lives <clears throat> daily? We find the answer in Luke 11, verses 9 and onward. <clears throat> so I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. To the one who knocks, the door will be opened. <clears throat> then he makes a comparison with parents. <clears throat> which, of your, which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will he give him a snake or a serpent instead? No, of course, right? Or, if he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? Is there any father that would do that? Then he says this, If you then, though you are evil, talking about us, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, <clears throat> how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? You know, God is more willing. He's more willing to give the Holy Spirit than we as parents are willing to give good gifts to our children. And I'm sure we want the best for our children. We want to see them succeed. <clears throat> so when we speak of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit helps us in many ways. When we accept the Holy Spirit, we're told we get a train of blessings. Yes, <clears throat> But you know, there are, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, there are two fruits of the Spirit which help us with temptation. If we look at Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, is joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, there's one, gentleness and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. The two fruits that help us with temptation are faithfulness and self-control. Self-control is an inner, a inner strength that we get with the Holy Spirit. So those two fruits help us in an important way. But it's important to note this, that the fruits we are talking about we do not produce these two fruits, the fruit of faithfulness and the fruit of, of self-control. So how do we, how do we get this, these two beautiful fruits? We get them according to Jesus. Jesus said in John 15, 5, 
I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can what? You know, sometimes we don't believe that. We need to believe that abiding in Jesus, we could have these two fruits. See what happens. It's the Holy Spirit that produces the fruits of the Spirit. We're not fruit producers. We're fruit carriers. The Holy Spirit produces these beautiful fruits in our lives. So we as Christians want to be overcomers, I'm sure. And we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he's willing to give us the Holy Spirit if we ask. The Holy Spirit will empower you, empower us. It will empower us to have victory over the things in the world, things of the flesh. Yes, it will empower us to have victory over Satan, the enemy. The Holy Spirit, Spirit literally changes our lives. If we invite the Holy Spirit every day, take time with the Lord. He says, if you abide in me, how do we abide in him? Through the word, through the Bible. Taking time. Yes. <clears throat> so we need to invite the Holy Spirit once a week. No, it's daily. We need the Spirit daily. We have a good example, a beautiful example of the fruit of faith and self-control in the life of Joseph. Joseph, when he was sold to Potiphar, <clears throat> you know, jo Joseph acted in faith recognizing that God's hand was upon him as he served Potiphar. He was willing to do whatever, and he did it well. He did things willingly and well in Potiphar's house. Joseph demonstrated faith and self-control in fleeing from the temptation there in that house when Potiphar's wife Potiphar's wife was trying to seduce him. Yes. And, <clears throat> and what did he do when <clears throat> she wanted to make him fall? He fled the scene of temptation. So the second biblical safeguard is to flee, get away from temptation, wherever it may be. Potiphar's wife, and we're told Potiphar's wife falsely accused him. In Genesis 39, 15, she falsely accused him. When he heard me scream, she said, <clears throat> for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. You know, notice the way the devil works. Notice the persistence of Joseph's temptation. In Genesis 38, 10, we read, Potiphar's wife spoke to Joseph how often? Day after day. He could never let down his guard because the temptation by this woman was relentless. She was after him. Now, one day, one day, Joseph found himself in a dangerous situation. He was in the right place, but at the wrong time. <clears throat> alone in the house with this woman doing his work, working. None of the servants were in the house. And what did she do? Man, she was aggressive. She grabbed him by his garment and said, sleep with me. Verse 39, 11, 12. Uh, Joseph recognized that he was in a dangerous situation, and he was. And in verse 12, we read, Joseph escaped and ran outside. <clears throat> Some circumstances call for running from fleeing, getting away from the dangerous situation. Thank you so much. <clears throat> you know, just getting away. What can we learn from Joseph? And that is to avoid situations when possible where you know you will be tempted to do wrong. You know, some people, for example, some drug addicts, 
if they're recovering drug, drug addicts, they can't get a job at a meth lab where they have a lot of drugs. A very simple way to overcome temptation <clears throat> is to avoid those things that tempt, tempt us. And you know what they are. We all get tempted different. He pokes us here, pokes us there. Every one of us, <clears throat> he knows our weaknesses. Second Timothy <clears throat> chapter 2, verse 22 says, Flee the evil desires of your youth. And pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Romans 13, 13 and 14. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. We need to avoid compromising situations. Yes, if married or single, Avoid being alone with the opposite sex in a tempting place or situation. We need to flee. We also need to guard our senses. You know, these are the avenues to the soul, our senses, what we see. We need to be careful. There's so much junk out there, pornography. We need to guard our senses. We're told they're the avenues to the soul. We need to flee from them. Yes, Joseph fled from Potiphar's wife. Let us follow his example. We find ourselves in these situations that the devil tries to trap us in. <clears throat> Another practical safeguard is this. When temptation strikes, refocus attention in a different direction. I'm going to explain this. Since the battle to overcome sin is won or lost in the mind where temptation starts with a thought, we should know that evil thoughts, temptation, cannot be blocked out. We can't try to block out. They come. We said the temptations come. We can't try to block them out. This trying to block them out, this process only drives them deeper into our memory. The only way to neutralize such thoughts, such temptations, is to turn our attention to something else. And how do we accomplish that? How do we turn our attention to something else? When the tempting thought comes to you and me, change the channel. You know, like you're doing television, something comes out, and we change the channel. We need to change the channel. Think on something else, more elevating. This is known as the principle of replacement. Replace a bad thought with what? A good thought. <clears throat> Directing our attention to God's word. Listen, we've got good counsel in God's word. <clears throat> when temptation comes, a bad thought comes, and they will come. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whether it's whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, what does it say? Think about such things. We turn our thing, our thoughts to things that are elevating. We can't see down there where we're being tempted. We got a direct Refocus our attention to something else, positive. <clears throat> Last week and today, you know, we have seen various safeguards <clears throat> available to us when temptation strikes. But the most important lifeguard of all is to clothe ourselves with Jesus Christ. Romans 13, 14 says, rather... Clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ <clears throat> and do not think about how to gratify the desires of your flesh. How can we clothe ourselves with Jesus Christ? It's by putting on the full armor of God. That's putting on Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6. <clears throat> we can't go too deep on this. The armor includes the helmet of salvation. 
Yes, guarding our hearts, our thoughts, our, and our mind, thinking of heavenly things. <clears throat> the breastplate of righteousness helps us with temptation. Now, <clears throat> the breastplate of righteousness, it's the righteousness of Christ that covers us. When we repent and accept Jesus Christ, what does he do? He imputes his righteousness to us. In other words, <clears throat> he puts his perfect life, perfect character, under our account as if we had lived it. We are credited. We are declared righteous. That's the imputed righteousness. <clears throat> the imparted righteousness, there's no righteousness apart from Christ. He comes to live in us through the Holy Spirit. And that's when we start growing. That's called sanctification. The imparted righteousness. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So we need to be, to have the breastplate of righteousness. It's not our righteousness. It's the righteousness of who? Of Jesus. Yes. Then he says, and um, there's a beautiful text on this. <clears throat> I don't think I have it up there. We need the righteousness, like I mentioned, imputed. Isaiah 61, 10. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices with my God. For he hath clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and a bride, you know how beautiful they adorn themselves, well, he adorns you and me with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Isn't that beautiful? <clears throat> now, the belt of truth also helps us. <clears throat> I'm going to have to take a drink here. Excuse me. <clears throat> the belt of truth. <clears throat> We have to be, have the belt of truth, which is also Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, and what else? The truth and the life. Three things there. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We need Jesus in our lives. There's no other way. Now, the gospel of peace. You know, we need to proclaim the gospel of peace. This is going into the offense. We need to share the gospel with others, the good news of salvation, the gospel of the kingdom. You know, I have found in my ministry, when I study, when I help others, I'm really helping myself. It's so important for us to get involved in ministry, helping others, Doing things for others. So, the sword of the spirit, we spoke about this last week. The Bible is a very effective weapon when it comes to fighting temptation. There's lovely promises, beautiful promises in the Bible to claim. And remember this, the answer is in the promise. The promise are enablings. We thank God before we see the answer. All right. Now we come to the shield of faith. Shield of faith. This is, probably, this is this here in particular deals with temptation. The shield of faith. The shield of faith is essential. It is essential. It's, in other words, um, that, this is the one that helps us. This, this weapon here, the shield of faith, deals directly with temptation. Ephesians 6, <clears throat> 16. Use the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Those fiery darts that it talks about here are the temptations the devil shoots at you and shoots at me. We need to lift the shield of faith, our faith in Jesus. You can't let it down. You've got to keep that shield of faith up. Because the arrows are going to come. They're going to come. So we need to hold the shield of faith, faith high. 
trusting in our Lord Jesus Christ. He will help us when temptation strikes, when we find ourselves under a barrage of temptations. <clears throat> when we wear the full armor of Jesus, the Bible tells us we are able to stand, stand against temptation. So now <clears throat> that we've studied this important topic of temptation, you know, there are four things that we shouldn't say. <clears throat> These are, I want to tell you, four things that we should not say. Number one, I am being tempted by God. James 1.13 says, For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Some people think to being tempted by God, God does not tempt anyone. No. Number two, I am the only one who has ever been tempted like this. No, we all, we are all tempted. It's very similar. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has seized you except what is what? Common to men. <clears throat> we all get tempted in very, some more in one area than another. But we, yeah, you're not the lone ranger. You're not the only one that's being tempted strongly. We all get tempted. <clears throat> and three, it says, this this temptation is too strong for me to resist. Never say that. Why? 1 John 4, 4 says, The one who is in you, which is Jesus, is greater than the one that is in the world. We have strength. Jesus is with us. He already defeated the devil. We're on the good side. Jesus is with us. For there is no way out of this temptation but to yield to it. In other words, to give in to it. No. 1 Corinthians 13 says, But when you are tempted, God will provide a way out so that you can stand underneath it. He provides a way out for us. <clears throat> That's the kind of God we have. He wants us to ask him for help. <clears throat> he says, ask. And he'll come in. And he'll fight our battles. He'll give us victories. You know, understanding and resisting temptation <clears throat> is something that anyone who follows Jesus can do. Paul says, a very known promise, Philippians 4.13. What does it say? I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Not just some. That includes, includes recognizing and resisting temptation. You know what? But it doesn't just automatically happen. Once again, we need to ask. Sense our need. Sense our need. We need to learn to act and act and take responsibility in conjunction with the Holy Spirit. You know, perhaps today in here, I don't know. <clears throat> perhaps today you are tired. You are tired of living and repeating the cycle of temptation. <clears throat> you must be... T that leads to sin. Perhaps today you want to take responsibility and confess what's happening in respect to temptation in your life. Yes, I invite you to talk to Jesus. Ask him to help you. I know there's some here this morning that are going through the cycle of temptation and you want to break it. Certain habits, certain things in your life. <clears throat> I'd like for us to pray together. I'm going to begin the prayer and then I'm going to give, I'm going to pause. Everyone prays silently for God to help you. Because we have an enemy that knows our weaknesses. An enemy that wants to make us fall. Let us ask him to help us with a cycle of temptation. All right?
Hey, let us bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we all get tempted. And we want to ask God for your help. Some are going through difficult trials, difficult times. They're discouraged. They're down. They feel like there's no way out. But God, you promise to be with us. And so at this time, we're going to call upon you. Heavenly Father, you've heard our prayers, our petitions. And God, we ask that you will give us the strength, that inner strength, that self-control, that inner strength that comes from abiding in you. Help each one of us here to be victorious, to look up. We have a loving God, a caring God, a good God. We thank you, you love us. And want the best for us, just like we want the best for our children. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you.